Hey, what's up? So in this video, we're going to do a little interview with this six-figure copywriter, undercover copywriter. And yeah, this is Henry. Henry, do you want to do a little so, introduction? Yeah, I'll do a quick 30-second uh, quick introduction. Yeah, what's up? I'm Henry, 19 years old from London. As the rest has said, done, uh, done some pretty cool things in copy, marketing, uh, working with some big seven eight figure brands in like the info coaching space writing their copy managing their email list so uh yeah we're pretty much just gonna riff raff like there's no script to this uh we just decided yo let's do like a podcast interview see if people can get some value and yeah that's pretty much it yeah good stuff man so how long have you been in the game first of all bro not too long like not even two years yet not even two years and what revenue range are you if if you can share that with the audience yeah, like 10 to 15k a month. It, it really varies from month to month, but hopefully we can uh, break 15 this month, God willing. Perfect. And you said you said you're working with some seven, eight-figure clients. Can you share how much money you've helped them make throughout your career? Yeah, almost, almost a million right now. It could be a million, but I don't like track the numbers like wow. in, in detail, but we'll just say mm, a million, yeah. Insane, bro. Like when you first started, did you expect that your brain, your your arms, like your words could generate money? Honestly, when I first started, I didn't even believe that copy was a real thing. Like when I went through the first course, like on Hustlers University, I was like, bro, how could this ever generate some money? Like, I just don't understand. But if we're talking in terms of business, like I always had that self-belief in me. Like I always knew it. Like even when I was like, like dead broke less than like zero pounds in my bank account like like negative numbers yeah. i was just like i always knew i could make it somewhere i didn't know how i didn't know what was going to happen i didn't know what roadmap i was going to follow anything but all i knew is i just had such conviction in myself that i knew i was going to get to the top you know and some people text me they're like oh bro you made it how do you feel i'm like bro what are you on about i'm not even started yet like how have i made it bro i'm speaking with eight eight figure entrepreneurs at the age of 23 and they're telling me they're still on their come up what the freak if i made it if i'm make oh okay cool you make six figures a year or more like that's step one bro yeah it's like step one you know you could keep keep climbing you know but uh yeah i've always had that belief in myself and yeah that goes back to there's levels to this shit bro like we're just new to yeah. the game we've been in the game for what one two years we're at six figures like what is this what is six figures if you don't make Nothing. seven figures at least like this is a stat I was coming up with I was searching for yesterday because I was writing a VSL for a client and I found that in the USA you only belong in the top 1% of income once you become a millionaire mm. yeah exactly if you don't so, become a millionaire you basically like everybody else and again yeah. I don't even see becoming a millionaire as the end point what about you Oh, 100% not, bro. Look at Monaco. One in three people there are millionaires. 33% of the population are millionaires. How the frick are you going to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, I'm a six figures a year, big G, when every three people you meet, one of them's richer than you. So it's like, oh, you, you haven't even accomplished anything. Well, obviously you have, but I think, as you said, perfectly, there's levels to the game. I was speaking with uh, my friends who were in, like, university back from school, and they were like, dude, you're telling me making 10k a month is the bottom of the bottom of the barrel in business but for us in the employee world you're already at the top you're 19 you've you've just done business for a couple of years and you're already at the top and it's kind of crazy because like it's all about perspectives bro like if you look at it from their perspective it's like oh my days this guy like he's doing so well but to me it's like bro there's people earning 10x 100x what i'm earning so why would i ever sit here and be like oh yeah i'm doing I'm doing amazing like obviously it's good to be proud of well not really proud but like it's good to just see what you've accomplished yeah but don't get like caught up in that you know just just keep looking forward because that's the only thing you know that, that yeah yeah, yeah. To accomplish. bro i agree with you 100 percent. that's something i was having a conversation with with my student yesterday she was wondering about all this stuff and i'm like okay i made what 1k 1.5k in a day i've been making this consistently for a bunch of days this month at least and so I'm like, I've already, I'm already making more than most people make in a month in my country in a day. And I still don't consider that an achievement. I was having a conversation with my dad too the other day in the car. And I told him, 
the next stage is to make what most people make in a, in a year, in a day. That's the next stage. Like, imagine making 15K in a day. And that's still nothing, bro. There's people we know in the, in the mastermind we're in. They're making 500 fucking K in a day. 500K in a day. How is that possible? Yeah. How is that possible? They make yeah. what most people make in their lifetime. Like, in, like 20, 30 years in a day. That's it. That's it, bro. Like, there's, there's, as I said, there's levels, bro. There's levels. And once you expose yourself to these levels, you start to realize it. Like, for example, if you just stick yourself in some, in some small town or, like, you just don't, like, this is why, like, I really believe you should go out and network, see the world, because you just see there's levels to the game. Like, bro, I was sitting in Miami. Uh, <laughs> I was having dinner with some guys. And, like, there's, there's, like, a Lambo behind me, like, it's cool, whatever, it's, just, it's like a Lambo, then, like, there's a few people looking at the Lambo, and then a Bugatti Chiron pulls up, everyone stops looking at the Lambo, they rush over to the Bugatti, right, there's just, there's levels to the game, and I was actually telling one of my friends, like, and this isn't to, to come across as arrogant or something, but when you go to Dubai, the amount of Lamborghini Hurricanes you see is crazy, so, like, if you go one year back, if I saw a Lamborghini Huracan, I would have been like, oh my days, I would have took a picture or something. <laughs> now, like, I honestly don't care. Like, I, it's kind of, and I don't say that in an arrogant way, it's just you get used to it so fast. So it's like, there are people, I was actually speaking to one of my friends, and he was like, dude, I need a Lambo to fit in with my friends. Like, <laughs> if wow. my friends have Lambos, I'm the only one left out. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all about wow. the levels you expose yourself to, you know, if you just stay in that small town, and you don't you don't travel you'll think you've made it a 10k a month you know I, i'm originally from a small town in italy where if you make 10k a month you're like you're like top but when you expose yourself to dubai levels of wealth miami so you make 10k you're like you're a small fish you mm. know? bro i agree with you i was actually having a conversation with some of my dork friends you know a few months ago like four or five months ago i had just gone out with them for for one time just to catch up and stuff and they were like, so how much are you making? How much are you making? And I don't tell them, of course. I'm like, I can't share that. Mm. And they're like, okay, are you making at least $100 a day? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, then you're perfect. Then you're settled. You're perfect. That, nobody makes that amount of money. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I didn't say that, of course. And I'm like, bro, that's, that's 3K. 3K, it's just my, my basic living expenses at this point. Because I do, I ha have a lot of coaches, Muay Thai offers yeah. you know copywriting email it's everything i have coaching and everything that's that's the name of the game and so it's so crazy that people you surround yourself with you end up becoming and, I, and i'm yeah. so i'm so happy um, that i got this lesson so early in my journey in, in my first few months and i stopped being around these people what do you have to say about that like what do you have to say about old friends and generally people from your old life what do you do about that yeah yeah so I'm kind of on both sides because I, I agree with you. I think every few months just to catch up with them and talk about like school, that's fine, bro. Like you have fun in school. They're your old friends. Talk about them, you know, especially if they helped you out when you're in school. Like for me, my friends helped me out. So it's like, I'm not going to sit there and forget them, right? But if you do hang around with them too much, their mindset is going to seep into yours. You know, everything they say, all of their limiting beliefs, that is all just going to seep into your own mind. And yeah, it's hard to block out that consumption. So it's it's very important that you surround yourself with people that, honestly, I always use this example, but if you were living with three other guys and all of them were making 50K a month and you were making 10K a month, you best believe you wouldn't even sleep until you're at 50K a month. Like you'd just be catching up 24 seven. You'd work harder than them. You'd work longer hours because you just got that drive. But if you're making 10K a month and you're living with guys who are making 2K a month, and you're seen as the big G. Uh, you're seen as the big G. That's why I don't like to mentor people too much. Like, I like to, I love to help people. Don't get me wrong. If anyone reaches out to me, I will most of the time respond if I'm not too busy. But if you sit there constantly mentoring people, like, let's just say in, like, the biz up space, you're, you're helping people who are constantly below your income level. They're always saying, oh, my days, you earn so much. Oh, my days, you earn so much. And it starts to get to your head. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm the big G around here. Like, there's no competition for you. Mm. There's no, like, higher level. There's no one above you. That's why I, I don't like to dive into coaching too much 
because it just sets the standards kind of low for yourself. But as I said before, if you were constantly surrounding yourself with people who are making 50, 100, 150K a month, a million a month, two million a month, you're like, bro, I'm so broke. I need to get to work. And then you've just got that drive to keep going forward, you know? So, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I have yeah. to say about that. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you got to go sometimes with them, you know, just to catch up and stuff. You got, you don't want to spend too much time with them because it kind of kills yeah. you. It kind of kills you, especially if they're broke and negative, bro. That's the deadliest combo. That's the deadliest combo, bro. Deadly. I have some friends who are yeah. like that and I'm, you know, I'm considering whether I should stop hanging around them. I should stop hanging around them or not. And what yeah. you said about surrounding yourself with people who are ahead of you are going to make more money. This actually happened to one of my best friends. He's actually in video editing and stuff. And we went in, a, in this little tra travel. So it was like two, three weeks. Mm. And for the yeah. amount we traveled, and as you know, he's an editor, I'm a copywriter. There's no way I can coach him or something. We went together yeah. and in these two to three weeks, he made like five to 10 times more money than he usually makes. Mm. Just by yeah. being some, around somebody who's making more than him and somebody who is like him. Bro, it's exactly. so powerful. And again, bro, so at 10K a month, I, I, I started feeling so broke, bro, for the past few months. Yeah, it feels huh. so broke. It's like you can't, even, you can't even go to Dubai all the time. You can't rent supercars every single day. It's like you can't do this stuff with 10K. You, you can't do what you want, bro. Yeah. What do you feel like is the exactly. sweet spot when it comes to income? The sweet spot? It really depends on how you want to live your life. I would say for the average person, if you make, if you make 50k a month profit, you'd have a good, like you would be pretty comfortable. But for me, like, like I want to push above that 100%, but it's not really because of the money, it's just because I really, I do like business. And unfortunately in business, the money and the revenue you're at is kind of like the progress level. So it's like when you level up, is when your revenue increases right that's just kind of the metric so I, I just honestly really like business i really love marketing so pushing past that wouldn't be hard for me but if someone so i was actually having this conversation with a friend like if someone doesn't really love business like bro you can make 10 to 20k a month doing anything even if you don't like it and you just do it for long enough but going past those levels i feel like you've you've got a, it's, it's hard like if you want to go past those levels and you don't like what you're doing it's going to be a lot harder for you but uh, yeah, like it's just, I feel like it's a lot easier for me because I just love the game. Uh, I love marketing, copywriting, running ads, making money online, uh, like doing all these things, generating revenue for my clients, for myself. So yeah, it's, it, it makes the game a lot easier. But yeah, to answer your question, I'd say for the average person, if you make 50k a month profit, you can pretty much like, you can get a sick house, sick car, you can help out whoever you want. You know, like 50k is like, pretty decent per month so yeah that's what i'd say the sweet spot is mm. what would be your dream income for you to say okay Ooh, enough tough. money i don't give a fuck about money now we focus on other things that's ah uh, that's hard man that is a really hard question because so i always tell people like i don't really like to plan into the future because you just never know what's going to happen in the future so when i say these things it could change like tomorrow or in a week or something at one point I would say the the like a good income for me like viewing into the future would have been 200 200k a month but then i was like well depending on what happens in it but i would like to push to seven figures a month at least like a mil a month two mil a month three mil a month i feel like I, that's the thing I, I don't know i really can't forecast it but i would say yeah to get to seven figures a month would be a, a great achievement for me and you know god willing one day one day we crack it man Bro, I have the same goal. 100K to a million a month. That's that's my goal for now. Because you can do whatever you want. Like, money doesn't even exist at this point. Speaking of this, no. what's your opinion about this thing that they say? Abundance. Treat money like you don't care about it. So you, you prove to your subconscious that you don't care about it, so you can attract more of, more of it. What do you think about this? Um. Yeah, I mean, all this, like... I'm probably just going to get hate for this, but I don't believe in any of this spiritual BS. Like... I believe in God and God's going to provide me whatever I want. Not me sitting in the mirror saying, oh, I'm going to get money. I'm going to get money. Like, that's not going to work, bro. God's going to give me the money if I'm going to do right things with it. But in terms of, yeah, I mean, 
I do believe in if if you spend more, you're just going to force yourself to make more. Uh, obviously, I'm not some like financial advisor, so don't go spend all your money because of this one quote. But uh, for example, in Dubai, like you asked me on our last call, like how much did you spend, and I quote quoted quite a high number. But that's like it's just like put me in a state of like oh my, like I'm not used to seeing my bank like that. So I'm like okay, I've got to go recover. I've got to go um, get some more back. You know, and I've, I've always believed that, like, if you just spend more, you will put yourself in a mindset to just make, make more. Because if you just have the money sitting there in your bank, you do get comfortable. You do get comfortable. So if you go invest in a coaching program, pay in full for the year, it's like, sure, you're going to take a short term hit. But honestly, in the long term, it's not going to matter. And in the short term, it's going to push you more to just get that number back up, you know? And I don't really like attaching my identity to a number in my bank account, but, and I don't, but like just seeing that is like, okay, let's push a bit harder. Let's, mm. let's, let's get that lost bit back. You know yeah, I mean? so, so you know who you are and you don't care about the money, whether that's the, the first number is four or five or six or seven, you, you don't care, right? Yeah, that's the thing, dude. As, exactly as you said, like whether that's four, five, six or seven, it really doesn't matter. And linking to a, a very similar point is, <laughs> I see a lot of people that they're like scared to invest in themselves. And I heard a point from someone which I will never, will never leave my mind. It's like, if you've got 2,700 pounds or 5,400 or 4,300, you're still broke. Like it doesn't matter. Like the number you have doesn't matter. Like you might as well invest that money to make more money because you're never ever going to get to, okay, state your dream income, whatever it is. You're never going to get to that number if you just leave that sitting there and just keep saving, because where's saving got you to now, right? 5,300 pounds, like, oh, wow, like you're rich, right? So you need to use these, and I, I love this analogy, you use like the money or like the dollars as individual soldiers, sorry. Basically, you just deploy the soldiers somewhere and they have to go out and get you more dollars. So like you deploy yeah. your money to go out and get you more. Uh, yeah. I feel like that's, that's such a point you know you're it's only when you get to the big numbers like there's a big difference between a billion and a million sure but there's not much of a difference between three thousand seven hundred and two thousand five hundred so you might as well spend that difference to go make some more money because there's just no difference right bro i agree with you so much it's like i have some money in the bank okay i'm not gonna brag about it and so there are a few people who are like uh, in my close circle they're like bro why don't you get into stocks why don't you get into crypto why don't you invest your money what about that shit and I'm like, bro, it's like, okay, maybe it's multiple five figures, but what the fuck is five figures going to do to my investment portfolio? Okay, I'm going to make like, let's say I put 10 grand into a stock. It's, maybe it's going to put out, spit out 10% a year. It's 1K. Wow. 1K. What a life changer, bro. What a life changer. And it's like, I tell them, bro, if I don't get to at least 100K a month, 1 million a month, I don't care about investing because investing in these yeah. things, getting into real estate, it's cool. I don't blame you. It's cool. Getting into stocks, getting into crypto, it's cool. It's good to diversify, as people call it, after you make a lot of money. But first, you got to focus on the main thing. you got to focus on the main thing. Mm. Cash flow. Cash how can you make more? Yeah. Not how can you invest more? It, that's how I see yeah, it. Yeah, Do you yeah. agree with this? I'm yeah, 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 like I, so there was a period like a couple months ago. So one of my biggest clients, they run like a really cool, like crypto decentralized finance mastermind. And I'm learning a lot about the space in itself, how they invest. I'm like, dude, like this is good. Like, I'm going to go invest, right? So I put some of my money in and it's, I, I do agree with you. When you, when your money is low, there is low leverage. Like there's just no point, but this is kind of like another point tied to that. I invested some of my money in it. And then I was sitting there one day, I was like, what the frick am I learning from this? Like, what am I actually learning? So then all I did, I instantly got up, got to my computer, withdrew all the money. And I was like, okay, I'm going to invest this in coaching calls with people in the industry. Like, that's it. Like, invest in mentorship or coaching calls to even, oh, if you don't even want to learn from them, just increase your network, right? And just like increase your connections in the space. Like, Investing in all of these things, especially when you're young, if, if you were 60 years old, then fine, go put it in like an investment portfolio. But right now, 16 years old, bro, 
you know, God willing, I'm going to live till that age. But right now, like, I, I've heard another quote, which is like, it's hard to make a bad financial decision when you're young. You know, just go out, just attack with the money. And like, you're, mm. you're going to learn so much more that way than it just sitting in like some some crypto coin that may, yeah, as you said, maybe it goes up 10%, maybe it goes up 30%. Like, who cares, dude? Like, why don't you invest in your skills that you're going to have for the rest of your life and no one can take from you? Because, bro, you put your money in that crypto market, it could just crash overnight. Like, it, it could. Like, that's the reality. But it's not like there's someone that's going to come and take your skills overnight. Like, that just doesn't work. So, yeah, once you invest once, once you have those connections, obviously, unless you ruin your reputation, you've got both of those things forever, right? Like, the connections and the skills. The skills, no government, no economy, no, mm. nothing can take them from you. That's why I've always always been a big fan of investing in my skills 100 bro lo love what you said about connections and network because i feel like that's the number one thing that that's keeping from copywriters from making the money they want it's that not many people of importance know who they are they don't know who they are yeah they don't know them they, they don't even know anybody other than that some copywriters on some discord server with 10,000 other people from whatever who never worked with a client <laughs> That, that's not a connection. That's not a network. I want to make this very clear. I want to make this clear. Mm -hmm. Knowing, and I don't mean it in an offensive way, knowing 20 people from a third world country who haven't made any dollars online, don't know what they're doing, isn't a fucking network. Being around your dork people from your neighborhood isn't having a network or being around killers. It, it's not how this works. So what are some ways for the copywriter watching this or anybody really to, to build a network. First of all, coaching, so, masterminds, what else is it? Yes. So I wanna, yeah, so coaching masterminds, I think is gonna be the number one way. But I wanna make an important point here, which is sometimes you have to pay to get access to the room. Don't expect to go and get access to all these high level people for free. So a cool story once, but I literally, Low key, like I didn't really like. I wasn't too interested. Obviously, he's got great game, you know. But I, my main intention of getting on the call with him was not to learn. It was more to just have that connection and have that have that relationship foundation. Mm. I almost paid like thousand dollars for one hour of his time uh, just to get like a, a connection with him. And yeah, wow. it's definitely worth it, dude. It's definitely worth it. And you need to be willing. To, I'm not saying go splash a thousand dollars a day on, on these types of calls, but you've got to be willing to pay to get in the room because sometimes you're you're just not gonna be able to get into the room just like for free, right? It's very rare. And the second thing, like especially if you're just bro, just being likable, like it's such a big thing. But just being a likable person and being in agreement with the other person a lot, those are two things that have helped me a lot. It's like when you agree on something with someone you just become instantly more likable to them it's like oh dude like we're on the same wavelength like he agrees with my points i agree with his points like it's just it's just a good connection you know and that's just one of the ways of being likable but i'm not going to go through a checklist of how to be likable but you know it's just use your brain in it but like just be a likable person and connections just come so much easier it's like you just make friends with everyone you go talk to everyone and another thing is like don't be afraid to like approach people and just talk to them because even if you don't have like value that you can give them, like I'm sure they got value to give you, but like, oh, just go talk to them. Like, don't overthink it. Like, oh no, I don't have value. I'm not gonna go talk to them. It's like, okay, you just missed out on the connection 100%, but you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Right? I think that's the quote or something like that. So mm. yeah, like go freaking talk to as many people as possible. Tell people about what you do. If you're looking to land clients, bro, it's not just about get getting good. It's about getting good at telling people you're good. Because if I made a billion dollars as a copywriter, right, but then I don't tell anyone, like, have I, like, it's like I've basically done nothing. It's basically like I'm not even a copywriter at all. But if I'm screaming, I'm like, yo, this client, I got this result, this client, I got this result, and everyone's seeing it, it's like, cool, now people know. Now that billion dollars has significance, but before it didn't. And I actually met yeah. up with uh, agency, the guy in the agency space, and... He was just like to me, like I was, I was telling him, he was asking me about like moving to Miami and stuff. I was like, yeah, got, got to sign a couple clients, a couple clients more before I do that. And uh, he was like, dude, you want clients? Get louder. That's it. 
you said get you want more clients just get louder get louder about your results get louder about what you do tell everyone what you do you know because if you're just like oh i'm henry wager it's like who's henry wager bro? he could be some construction worker like mm. oh, I'm henry wager i school businesses blah 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 right like you just let people know like in a non-salesy way just like what you do is yeah super important and last point i want to make on this that i feel a lot of people don't do is instead of talking just listen don't try and sit there and i've made this mistake many times i'm not here to say that i'm, I'm blameless but just instead of like trying to talk and like talk about yourself just listen to what that person has to say just listen more put the ego down listen more whether they're lower let, i don't like using these terms at lower level higher level like you know what i mean um just listen bro but that, that's my honest game on like networking where you're going to find these people as you said i think coaching programs masterminds like i've grown my network a lot inside of you know the email dojo uh, and other various masterminds i'm in but yeah mm. apart from that i think that's that's some game on, on networking bro. yeah 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 that's perfect bro that's insane value you watching this fucking write this down write this down write this shit down and here's a follow-up question about what you said so that the person watching this can get more value Let's say you, you end up joining these programs. What's the way for you to become the most valuable person possible in these programs and in these masterminds? So you can get people yeah, to like you. Point. Because it's not just about joining the programs. If you just join, you don't participate, you're just going to be a nobody that pays money to be in these programs. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Uh, you don't want to waste your money. So yeah, I agree with you. The way to, well, the way I've, I've done it personally, is just one, being very clear that you're a guy that gets results. Like for example, if, if someone, if I reach out to someone and I offer some advice on something, like all due respect, like I do earn more than most people in this mastermind or like in, in other masterminds or this isn't just one, this is multiple, right? Like basically to put it simply is like, make sure that people know about your results and know about who you are. Like, it's not just about get louder to get clients. And this is in a non-egotistical way, but you kind of have to just show people, yeah, I'm the guy who knows what he's doing, right? So whenever you say something, they take it like a bit more seriously than they're not just sitting there that you're thinking you're a beginner. But the biggest way you can do that is just helping people without expecting anything in return. And this, this goes for everything, even not just in masterminds, but let's keep it to masterminds, right? Like if someone in the chat it's like, yo, I've got this problem with the client. Like, you just reply, DM me. They'll yeah. DM me, have a conversation. You figure it out. You help them. If someone wants to copy your review, just be like, yeah, sure. Why not? And, like, here's the key. Don't ever expect anything in return. Don't ever expect anything in return. Just give, 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 give. If something comes back to you, amazing. Well done. Congratulations. If mm. it doesn't, so, so what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why? So, so you do these things just goodwill you do these things you don't expect anything in return and if something good happens it happened it's like you view it as a christmas gift you don't expect the christmas gift though exactly yes you give 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 and you don't expect anything and yeah love that naturally i think that people through the law of reciprocity will love that yeah i should give to you but just don't just don't think mm. about it. Give, help. love that shit bro insanely good advice how would you suggest somebody who doesn't have results like he's just getting in the game maybe he's been in like six months nine months whatever he hasn't worked with his big clients yet he hasn't gotten them any crazy results how would you go about building your value coming off as the person who knows what they're doing how would you do that mm. okay well yeah that's a good that's a really good question actually i feel like even if you don't have results you can still have a good skill set like, there's no excuse not to have a good skill set. So, even if your skill set hasn't been put into action too much, like, let's let's just take copywriting as the basic example, right? If you're really good at copy, right, like, let's say you're really good at copy, but you haven't worked with these big clients yet, because it can happen. You know, like, signing big clients takes time, right? But you can get good at copy by yourself. Um, I feel like the best way is, yeah, honestly, it, it really depends on how the mastermind is structured. Like, for example, in the email dojo, right, where, you know, the coach will review your copy. If you show up every single call, all the time, you submit your copy, the coach doesn't have much feedback. It's like, oh, you're actually getting really good. You're getting really good. Every week, it's like, oh, damn, this is a good email. Oh, these were some good ads, right? Like, it depends on how the mastermind is structured. But I would just say, 
you don't have to have results for people to think you're good. Just get freaking good at your skill. That's in your hands, right? The client thing, sometimes it can go a bit wobbly. Like, for, for example, like uh, one of my friends, we had, a, we had a good call earlier today, and he was like, he's about signs, big deal, like big, big deal. And he was about to have a call, the onboarding call with the client, but he's in Florida right now and they're having a hurricane, so he couldn't get on the call, this prospect. So um, he had to like reschedule and stuff, right? Sometimes the client game is out of your hands, dude. Like you, you can't always just like rely on that. But working on your own skills and building your skills is always in your hands. So as I said, if you get copy, you know, you can show people you're good also by reviewing that copy, right? If you leave an in-depth review, telling people about things that they don't know and they go like, oh, dang, like this guy knows his stuff. If you do that to enough people, they're going to be like, okay, this guy's good. Let me ask him for another review. Mm. Like, maybe I can help him out in some way. You know what I mean? Like getting good at your skill is in your own hands, you know? Wow. Wow. What about, what about building your value and your authority when it comes to getting those clients? Mm. Yes, 100%. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because we can lead into personal branding, right? Like yeah. you have to... Well, I'll just tell you how I do it. Go look at my Facebook feed. All my posts, or most of my posts, are just building authority and credibility in any way possible, right? So for example, probably if I log on to like our revenue tracking software for one of my clients, I can literally see how much money my email's made. So I'll just screenshot that little number, be like, you know, just made my client another $20,000 today. Um, yeah, that's it, peace out. And that's the post. And it gets like 50 plus likes every time. Yeah. Like almost every time I do that quite a lot um, but it's just like creative ways to build credibility so for example my post today was about how many calls I've been on with like seven and eight figure CEO founders right although I'm not technically saying like about my results it like shows authority like I'm a mm. guy who's been on call, many calls with CEOs and eight, seven eight figure founders um, so yeah just like creating a personal brand and every single post or like almost every single post should convey your credibility or authority in one way or another. And I know people are going to be thinking like, oh, dang, like I don't have results. How do I do that? Well, just get creative with it. First of all, use your own brain. I always speak about this. But second of all, like if I have to use my brain for you for a second, you could take a picture of you on a Google Doc and you could be like, wrote nine emails today. Like, dang, that was that, that was tiring, but we pushed through it. Um, you know, even if they're sample emails, bro, who cares? You just wrote nine emails, congrats, post about it. Or if you have a mentor, post post a picture of the coaching call, like click, and then you're like, oh, you know, uh, got a mentor, like, you know, that's building credibility. You're investing in yourself, you, you've got a mentor. Um, other ways, bro, I don't know, use your brain, but those are, those are like two ways you can do it with value and having results for a start, you know? Bro, isn't it fucking crazy that you have to tell people to use their brain? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is how crazy the world has become. Everybody's expecting to land clients in 30 days of starting out. Like, they're expecting to get 10k a month in 90 days. They expect to never use their brain. They expect to a client to just fall in their lap, bro. It's, it's insane. It's insane. They can't think. Bro. I can't think, bro. They, they're like... I speak about this a lot with Matthew. Um, and we, we, we chat about this. And it's like, people just want to shift... They don't, don't want to use their own energy, their own responsibility. They, they want the other people to be responsible of the potential going wrong, right? It's like, so in the case that something does go wrong, it's like, oh, you know, he told me to do it though, so it's not my fault. They don't they, they don't want to be self, they don't want to hold themselves accountable, basically. I, I think that's a big reason with it. A second one is just like pure laziness. Um, people just don't want to use their own energy mm. to answer questions. And like when... When one of my mentors uh, mentioned this concept to me, I was like, dude, this is life changing. And I started implementing it. I barely asked him anything in months. Like, if you go through our message history, it's like, it's barely not even me asking anything. Uh, it's just because I use my own brain in many situations. And we, we both agreed that, bro, in like 95% of situations, you have an idea of what to do. Maybe you don't have the clear path, maybe you don't have a clear answer, but you have some idea of what to do so instead of you running to this mastermind and be like oh guys guys i need help like uh this client is asking me how much do i charge for this it's bro like, it's so bro i say this all the time in this master i'm not gonna name drop it of course we're in this mastermind that people are all all the time client responded with this what do i say back or 
this happened what do i say and i'm like bro it's not hard it's not why yeah. is this why is this why do you make this seem so hard it's so easy to answer like for me when i when i'm going through this hard hard questions and i need to use my brain what i do is i just i just hop on the on a hot shower bro hot shower mm -hmm. no music phone next to me mm -hmm. And my ideas pop up, and I instantly know what to do, bro. It's like I, you summon, mm -hmm. you summon some fucking news. How do they call it? How do people call it? This thing. I know what you mean, but the I don't know how to say it. Collective subconscious. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, some people say that you have the subconscious mind, the conscious mind that you have it on your own, and then you have a subconscious mind that we all share, like everybody shares. And you, you basically yeah, yeah, yeah. can take ideas from it. That's what people say. Mm. Anyway, we're yeah. we're yeah. deriving from 100%. from the secrets, bro. We're deriving from the secrets. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah it's, it's crazy, man. Use your brain. Like we all have these different like methods. But bro, for me, it's like I've just done it so much. I literally just sit down. I'm like, okay, cool. So what should I do next? And I just write down a few things. And it's like, okay, this one seems good. All right, bet. And if I'm really struggling, I'll just ask my mentor. But I'll be like, bro. I'll show him I put in the work though. I'll be like, bro, I've been thinking about this. Uh, I've got potential solution one, potential solution two. What do you think I should do? And I actually did this today. Today was one of the first days where I just couldn't decide on something. I had these two potential situations. I was like, yo, like help me, bro. Like I'm, I'm struggling with this. And he was like, okay. Well, he asked me a simple question to prompt me further. I was like, all right, I know the answer. Thanks. And that's the thing, bro. When I, when someone comes to me with a very simple question, instead of answering it, I say, what do you think? And usually they go, oh, well, I think I should do this, this, this. It's like, okay, so you already knew the answer, why did you ask me? And they're like, oh, damn, you're right. I did know the answer, I'm like, yeah, you should learn it. And that's it, that's the end of the conversation. You know? And then their life changed forever, right? So, oh, yeah, just freaking use your brain, man. It's not hard. Yeah, I tell it to my students all the time, bro. They're like, what should I do here? I tell them, what do you think? Give me the one three one. Mm -hmm. Give me the one three one. Yeah, one three one. Okay. Yeah, they tell it to me. Yeah. And the usual, the funny part is, bro. Just like you said, usually, you know the you know the three answers, the three possible solutions, and you know what's the best solution to go for. You already know it. Mm -hmm. It's just that your emotion is involved. I think I think that's what be keeping people from taking the actions because their emotion is involved. So what I do a lot of times is I try to imagine that a friend is in my situation, and I'm trying to give them advice on that particular topic. And I've I found that yeah. that thing helps me a lot. I'm glad you mentioned that like dude I just I do the exact same thing I'm like I just think uh, bro I was doing this subconsciously like I started to realize it like oh damn I actually do this like bro I would just think to myself okay if someone else was in this situation what would I tell them and sometimes your best advice is your own advice just take your own advice you know uh, yeah that's that's what I think that's another framework you start think what if someone came to you with the same problem what would you mm. tell them? and uh, go to the answer boom wow yeah, I think a lot of a lot of people would be richer, like much, much richer, if only they took their own advice. Not just not just money wise, bro. They would be better in relationship, they would be better in the fitness. If only they followed their advice. How many fat people or people who aren't in a good shape have you seen talk about the best diet or don't do this, don't do that? Yet they do this. Oh, it's so simple. It's like okay, you, I'm glad you mentioned fat people. Like if, if someone's fat, it's like they already know what to do. They know they shouldn't be at McDonald's seven days a week. They know they should be in the gym like three times a week. They know they should wake up and eat eggs instead of cake. What's the best workout they method? <laughs> exactly, bro. And then they ask me, like, what's the best diet? It's like, and then I see them eating, like, croissants and stuff. It's like, well, you know, like, you already freaking know. But I agree. You just, like, I, I don't waste my time in telling them because they already know. Like, I remember this guy. He came to me. Uh, he was like, I, I think he was out of shape or broke. I can't remember one of the two. I was like, no, no, he was out of shape. And I was like, he was like, yeah, what do I do and stuff? I was like, bro, you already know what to freaking do. You already know to go to the gym. You know to get on a diet. So just go do it instead of asking for me, you know? And it's so true. It's like in most situations, you already just know what to do. You just need to prompt yourself the right way and it will come, you know? Yeah, I agree with you, man. Back to what you said, yeah. back to what we said, actually. Being a fat person and asking for the best workout plan is literally like being a copywriter and asking for the best outreach method. Do you agree? Yes. 100%, bro. 
percent. And if I if I have to, I have some game of an outreach. Um, bro, by the way, edit this out. I have to go in like two minutes. So I'll, I'll just should I answer this? And bro, we're we're not editing this. Fuck it. We're not editing this. Fuck it. It's cool. Oh. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Don't worry. <laughs> answer your question. Answer the question, bro. Come on. <laughs> and we're going two minutes. Um, I bet. Um, so yeah, this is very counterintuitive advice, and no one likes to hear it. But the best way to sign clients in 2024 is to create your own outreach methods. Like, and everyone's like, "Oh, bro, how do I do that?" It's like, I don't know how you do it. Use your own brain. But <laughs> I use my own brain. Right? I use my own brain, and I sign like. I've signed countless clients, so bro. Bro, so can you, can you share your outreach method, please? Bro, <laughs> like, if, you, if even more than four people know this outreach method, it's a great, literally a great. So oh, you man. have to use your own brain to find out your own. Brain. But like, literally, the only ways I sign clients are through outreach methods I create, which don't take too long, or inbound. I just get completely inbound people to hit me up on Facebook, but. Oh, like I don't, I don't even know how I started coming up with these like my own outreach methods. But I just, I hate to use the the, the phrase again, but it's like I use my own brain. I was like, okay, cool. So I need to target these people. They're all here, right? How can I reach them with a message that's not really like that salesy, like the opposite of what everyone's doing? And I was like, oh, I've got it. And then I did it for two days, and I landed five k a month client. Like, is it really that hard? Pretty much no. And I always tell people like. If you actually wanted a client, you would have one right now. Like you would have one. Mm. Like I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna talk bad on anything. But I just see so many people. They're like, bro, it's been like six months. It's been like nine months, and I, I just, I just don't have a client. It's like, okay, but have you truly been trying hard? Have you truly, if you actually wanted a client, you'd be freaking going crazy, bro. You wouldn't be able to sleep. You'd be like, you'd be constantly texting on your phone, like. Telling everyone this, you'd be doing cold email outreach, Facebook, LinkedIn, freaking Snapchat, whatever, bro. You'd be doing it all, you know. Like, if you actually wanted a client, you would have one. That is the that's the bottom line, bro. Well, can you tease just one little line about what your outreach method is? Like the philosophy of your outreach, maybe. Okay, the philosophy. Well, the main philosophy is use your brain. The second philosophy, <laughs> is, second philosophy would be go where people aren't. I would say that. that that's something I would say. Okay. But I'll, I'll give you some, some game. It's like, when people are like, oh, bro, um, and look, maybe it works for people. I don't know. But for me, they're like, oh, oh uh, what's it, can you review my Instagram? The outreach method. I'm like, why are you on Instagram, bro? Why are you on Instagram? Like, there's, there's, there's tons of just low level copywriters outreaching to the same prospects you're outreaching to. Bro, anyone with the word coach in their bio has been obliterated. They've just been sent 50 plus messages. So, why is the 51st going to change their mind? That's what I say to people. So, I'm like, okay, go to LinkedIn. You know, people are starting to discover LinkedIn a bit. That's why I'm on Facebook as well. Not really, cause not because there's less people on Facebook. Secrets, secrets, bro. Business. Secrets. Don't share the secrets. Come on. Bro, Facebook, LinkedIn. That's all I'll say. That's it. Yeah, bro. I found. I, I did exactly what you're saying. I found this untapped outreach platform. I outreached there, bro. I sent ten outreaches. Literally ten outreaches that took me five, ten seconds each. Literally ten, fifteen yeah. seconds each. I get six positive replies. I send whatever the outreach method was. And today, bro, I open my platform, whatever that is. And it's like I had somebody following up with me about my outreach method that I forgot to send them. <laughs> and I'm like, exactly, what the fuck was this? It's like uh, clients are out there. Do you, do you be- Last question. Do you believe cooperating clients are running out? Are there enough clients for somebody who's actually an action taker he's actually serious about landing clients he's actually serious about making 10k a month is it too saturated to get into the game and reach 10k a month in, in 2024 2025 and onwards I don't know, so, uh, I'll, I'll, one thing i'll say is it's crowded at the bottom but at the top there's no one like bro uh our, our mentor matthew was saying it like bro people stay in this game for like three years and they leave even if they're good. 
Like, if you can just stay in the game for four years, like, no matter how good you are, you're going to be in, like, the top 5%. And it's so true. Um, it's crowded at the bottom. When you're just writing fitness emails for fitness coaches on Instagram, yeah, it's going to be hard to land clients. But when you can write targeting VSLs for financial companies, there's very, very few people mm. who can do that well. So, yeah. that's just an example. Uh, you know? That's something uh, I've realized, yeah, too. Yeah, if you're, if you're solid. You know, if you're solid, if you're a good, good copywriter, if you're a good person, good attitude, uh, you want to work hard, then, yeah, enjoy all the clients, bro. Insane value, bro. I should... People should probably watch this five times. I'm gonna lie. Yeah. So, at least yeah. ten times, bro. At least ten times, yeah. And note down all the secrets, by the way. Every time we said secrets and every time we said edit this out, this these are the secrets. <laughs> yeah. A- any final tips? Any final things you want to share? No, man. Just uh, thank God for all the success and hopefully we, we keep pushing in 2024, 2025, 2026 for years to come. And... Yeah, anything's possible, bruv, you know? Literally, just, it's so simple. Anything's possible. Just trust in God's plan, put your mind to it, and yeah. it'll feel work out for you, you know? Bro, insane call. Can't wait to meet you in Dubai in January. I'm also going to leave your sure. Instagram on the description. Do you have any other platform where people can find you? Yeah, yeah, just, uh, you can link my Facebook as well. It's, it's the exact same uh, username as my Instagram, official Henry W. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Facebook with that. So, uh, yeah, if you want to connect, send me a question, then DM me Perfect. or send me a message. Perfect. Now you're going to get 10 messages from people asking you about the best outreach method. That's it. What's your yeah, outreach method? Bro. Please, please share it with me. I'm from I'm from whatever. <laughs> you don't realize nice. my life depends on this. I, I literally had people. Anyways. So, yeah. Good chat with you, brother. And see you guys in the next video. Peace.